So, in the last class, we said that accreditation okay, and graduate attributes, which is required for uh, mainly the graduate attributes that uh, for engineering education graduate, four year program graduate attributes, Washington records and NBA guidelines. If you see, all these Washington records and NBA guidelines say that outcome, outcome means it is not that okay, some students say sir, I have uh, attended a course on analog electronics and I got X, but I do not know how to design a push pull amplifier that is there but I only know I describe teacher said me only description will come in the question paper. So, I will only study the description. Then in there your version records or your NBA requirements is followed. Because none of that accreditation boards or the mini when we define the minimum quality required for a graduate engineer is always in term of skill not in terms of knowledge. Knowledge means uh, remembering not wisdom. So, that means, I cannot say as a graduate engineer, I should have the capability of engineering design, I should have the capability of problem solving, I should have the skill or capability for design of experiment, for analyze the data, for interpret that analysis all kinds of skill set, not the knowledge and that is are the outcome. So, unless we know what is outcome based learning, how can I say that yes, I will write that my curriculum which is NBA accredited or I will follow a teaching learning process will guarantee that Washington record requirement. So, that means, I have to think, what do you mean by outcome based learning? And in first lecture I have said in 21st century, students require skill set. If you see that purpose of the education is to develop the skill, means what I have learned or what whatever theory, whatever the practical or whatever the teaching learning process I go through, at the end I am developing certain skill on myself, so that I can say I am educated because I have this certain skill. If you say what is the difference between a common people unless I am a B engineer in electronics or B tech engineer is in uh, uh, electronics. Somebody asks me what is the difference between you and me? I have to differentiate some skill set. Yes, you does not have this skill set, I have this skill set. That is why I am being engineer, not that I have only a certificate, I am being engineer. So, that means, whatever I learn, there should be a outcome. Learning is the process for acquiring the skill. Learning is the process for acquiring the skill. Skill is the outcome. So, uh, in any human being, nature of the human being is to I do something if there is an outcome. If I somebody said go to Kharagpur station, I will not go. If there is a some need, some requirement or some outcome, then only I can go to Kharagpur station. So, I can say outcome based learning that means, I want to develop the skill S 1, that is why I admitted this or I take this course. Many students I have asked in here also, why you have attend this course or what is the expectation that this course will offer you, they said sir only grade. If this is the outcome, then the purpose of the education is totally lost. I am attending a course or I am attending a program to develop certain skill which I does not and after that 
oh, I attend this program, I have this skill. So, outcome based learning said that suppose I have a program A is a program. A, this program said at the end of the program, all the learner must have this skill A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. Those are the skills. The learner have those skills. Now, once I define for the program A, a learner said that I have completed successfully program A, when I can say the skill A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, I am acquired. Similarly, brought down in uh, just break down it in a course level. So, program A contained a course S and that course is developed certain skill which is S1, S2, S3, S4 and that skill match with this program skill, match with this program skill. So, that means course developing the skill S1, S2, S3, S4 which are the outcome. So, I have attained this course because I want to develop this skill, not that I have to get a certificate of x a 80 percent 90 percent. So, I want to develop this skill that is why I attend this course, I want to develop this skill that is why I attend this program. It is unfortunate the learner today in scenario before a student admitted in a program, he does not know the expectation. If you ask any parent why you admitted your kid in this program, he said earlier J E rank this, got this institute, this program. So, this year my, my child uh, got rank, rank similar to this. So, my child also go to the same institute, same program. Now, where it is mentioned that institute A, <coughs> program P, if we attend this program, they will develop this skill. This is not mentioned. So, parents also not aware about, students also not aware about. After he attend this course, he found I am BTEC electronics engineer, but I do not like this. Ultimately, he get a certificate and get a job. So, ultimate aim is that okay, get a certificate and get a job, not that develop the skill. So, outcome based learning says that you should mention that this program develop this skill once a student enter the program and in the exit the student acquire that skill. That is the program gain. A program force the student to acquire that skill. I will give a simple example. Suppose I am admitted in a driving school. Am I happy with the knowing how the class working, how the gear working, how the <coughs> accelerator working or I want that at the end of the, the driving school, I should able to drive a four wheeler, if it is a four wheeler driving school for a specific road condition, this kind of road. So, suppose school A said that if you come to my school, I <coughs> will at the end of the program you should able to drive a car in Calcutta city and school B said if you come to my school you will be able to drive a car in highway and Calcutta city. Then it is a learner choice which school he will go. So, I a school I do not say that this is not important, so I will go to the school B. So, outcome based learning is that you have to define what is the learning goal. I just explained it in a simple picture taken, taken from the alias in the wonderland, everybody knows that, everybody knows the story also. That the story is very simple. There is a 
girl standing on a junction of some road and he asks the cat which road I should take. Then cat asks where you want to go? Girl said I do not know. Then cat said anything, any road. So, that means unless I am not defining the outcome, how do I define which learning process, which learning methodology, which book, which material I should follow to attain this outcome. Okay? I will teach a subject and I will deliver some lectures, all students is come in my class, they somebody take note, somebody does not take note, they practices from the previous year question paper and it is university said that whatever you taught some question must be come from your uh, lecture material, some question must be solved in the class, I give that student pass. Is any skill is developed? Am I increasing their self learning ability? So, that means, as a teacher I should define the goal and the path to reach the goal, that is the role, role of the teachers and test whether a learner reach the specific goal or not. Now, reaching the goal is the learner responsibility, whether the learner is able to reach the goal is the learner responsibility. But I said that suppose if you come to my course, those are the course goal A, B, C, D, those are the material, those are the test item is available. So, if you, uh, those are the material means those are the path to reach this goal. Whether you are able to reach this goal or not that is your responsibility. At the end I will test which goal you have reached and which goal you does not. So, the purpose of the evaluation only test the competence of the learner whether he acquire the intended skill or not. So, the role of the teachers is changed. Now, what is the role of the teachers? Role of the teachers is to define the goal, provide the path, test whether a student reached this goal or not and guide the students or overall guide the student to reach the goal. So, the role of the teachers become guide or mentor instead of teaching the student. So, learning is the learner responsibility. So, whole outcome based learning is called learner centric approach. I want to learn that is why I come to this course. Nobody force me I cannot force anybody to learn something. So, he ha he want to learn something that is why I come in this course and I said if you want to learn something or if you if you say that you are capable or you have a confidence in this course then those are the goal you have to achieve, those are the skill you have to acquire and those are the material available, those are the problem available by which you can test whether you reach the goal or not and you practice it and reach there. I am available only for guide you, mentor you to reach the goal, not spoon feeding the student to teach the subject, take the test and assign them grade A, grade B, grade C. So, in a outcome based learning, the role of the teacher changed to instead of teaching, mentor and guide. If this role of, role of the teacher is changed, then student self learning ability is already promoted. Because as a teacher, I am no, not providing the ready material to them, whether they just study before the semester, two days they study and give the exam and after exam everything is forgotten. I said in my course, you cannot attend or you cannot pass the course or you cannot say that I am clear the course 
unless you have developed the skill A, B, C, D. And my question for evaluation method only test whether the learner has acquired that skill or not. So, outcome based learning if I follow, then I can say I am scattered to 21st century education, I am scattered to domain dependent requirement, domain independent requirement of the Washington course and NBA guideline. I am catered to capability building among the students. So, it increases the student engagement. Okay. So, outcome based learning, I am not going through the all the slides, it is there. You can see address the following questions. One is what do you want the student to have able to do? That is skill set. How can you best help student to achieve it? that is guide. How will you know that they have achieved it? Evaluation, how do you close the loop? How evaluation system will reinforce the teaching and learning? Once I define the outcome and in evaluation I said the only student, most of the student only achieve the skill A and skill B, but none of the student is achieve the skill C. Then I have to revisit the teaching learning process and also the outcome. Maybe this outcome is not achievable or the teaching learning process which I am followed, they are not scattered to this outcome. So, outcome based education clearly said that learning is the learner responsibility, teacher is only for their to guide and mentor and remove the misconception happening on the student. If I do that, then it promotes the self learning ability, soft skill building and it scattered to the domain independent parameters of Washington records and NBA guidelines. So, this is outcome based learning. I am not again going all those things. So, if you see these slides, here we are explaining the program structures, what should be the overall program structures which promote the 21st century education and which create the skill set, skill set among the students which is required by the 21st century education. So, what is that? There is a mission vision statement, there is a program educational outcome, I am not going details of individual block, I will come then later on while the design of the curriculum. I am just explaining from the course outcome to teaching learning process, because the purpose of this course is to effective teaching, not for the accreditation, NBA accreditation and Watson records. I said the purpose for this course to how teach effectively what kind of teaching learning process I should use for effective teaching. So, this structure what is defined? Course outcome, I am explaining for the course, course outcome, the structure define the course outcome, course outcome is defined. Then I follow a teaching learning process, then I said teaching learning process which includes the modern tools and uses and I take the evaluation based on the whether a student achieved this outcome or not that is evaluation and I analyze the evaluation results. If some of the outcome is not achieved by any one of the students, then I have to change the teaching learning process or the outcome. Now, there is another <coughs> dimension of this. If I write down my curriculum or course in an outcome based manner, then what I am doing it? Once I write down, write down my course outcome in a specific skill set manner or outcome based manner, then and there 
if I share it with the industry, industry will say this kind of skill is absolute in nature. So, this may not require, please change to this kind of skill. So, as a teacher, I get a active feedback from the industry that this kind of skill set, suppose still um, I, I, I am teaching in a basic electronics course and one of the outcome I said that operation principle of the uh, diode, uh, valve diode or draw the VI characteristics of the uh, valve diode. Then industry said, why you will teach this thing? This kind of things is obsolete in nature, do not teach this thing. I get a feedback from the industry. Then my curriculum, I can continuously revise my curriculum. So, industry academia collaboration, unless we define what kind of skill set we want to develop among the students, how the industry will comment. Once I said my outcome is this, said one of the outcome, let us I write that uh, uh, they should able to uh, uh, simulate this kind of uh, 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 model using this software. Maybe the specific software is not available in my institute. That is the modern tool set, tools and resource, tools and technology and tools. That technology is not available in my institute. Then a industry can say, yes, this, this tools is very much useful and here is the open source version or here is the share version. You can give it to your students to develop the competence on this tool so that I can hire them after they complete their study. Or suppose I am explaining a concept, one of the outcome is uh, less, I, I taught a uh, subject or power plant engineering and where I uh, teaching the, the uh, design of the, the say less uh, design of turbine, simple turbine I am teaching in here, but I do not know actual, I do not have any actual turbine fixture, then if this is shared to the industry then industry person can say, let us, these are the resources, these are the fixtures of turbines and those are the design issues in turbine area. So, you can discuss in those issues in the class. Problem, suddenly we are unable to provide all kinds of problem to the students. Now, if it is a collaborative environment, let us that outcome A can be tested by a problem T. As a teacher, I define it. Somebody else can say, instead of T, let us use the T1, which test better than the skill. Some industry said, use this case study for test whether they have this skill or not. So, active collaboration between the industry and academia only possible if I write my curriculum in outcome based manner. If you say today's syllabus is used, if you see the syllabus, today's syllabus, what, what the syllabus mentioned, what are the advantages in syllabus and outcome based curriculum? For example, suppose if you look at the syllabus for DSP for a particular institute, it is written A, B, C, D, filter, uh, frequency response, LTI response. LTI, the discrete structure of the LTI system, all kinds of list of topics are there in the syllabus. Suppose today I am teaching this course and I am very good in DSP, I covered every topics in depth, whatever required for a B engineer, but tomorrow another person is come, he may be very good in frequency domain representation, but very weak in filter design. So, today what will happen? Most of the time the teacher will spend on the frequency domain representation, he spend less time in filter design, because it does not define the breadth, what kinds of filter you have to complete it, how much you have to, how much competence you have to develop, it is only the list of topic. So, it is based on the teacher, I can know how much depth I will go based on my knowledge. Now, what will happen? 
the students who follow this DSP course of this or this, the lack of knowledge in this filter design, when you go for the image processing class, they does not know anything about the filter design. So, they face the problem. Now, once you define that DSP for electrical engineering, those are the outcome is required. Then any one teacher, so once the outcome is defined, learner knows that if I say I have competence in DSP, I should able to do this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill, does not depend on the teacher. Maybe teacher A not, not uh, provide the material to develop the skill for this next th third skill, then, then and there he can search in the Google and find out how to develop the th third skill. So, it is a collaborative teaching environment. A new teacher joined here, he does not know what to taught in DSP. Once this curriculum is available, he know how to develop this skill, this skill, this skill among the students, those are the reference material already available, those kind of test item used for test the skill, those material is available and those are continuously upgraded by the industry. Now, teacher is only is a guide and mentor to the student to achieve this skill. So, the shortage of quality teacher can be solved using outcome based curriculum design. So, teaching now no longer teaching is varies from teacher to teacher, because learner knows I have to develop this skill A, B, C, D, it is his responsibility whether he develop those skill from the teacher, class teacher or from the Google, from the MIT open course, from the NPTEL open course or the NPTEL video, does not matter. Once I define this skill, it is done. Similarly, one issue, one more issue I want to explain that let us the grade transfer, some credit transfer. Somebody said that yes, credit transfer, I will uh, if you uh, do this course in this institute, that credit will be transferred. Presently, it is based on what? It is based on the reputation of the institute, reputation of the examination system. Why it will be based on the reputation? Suppose I defining my course, tux, course this less the thermodynamics, teaching by institute A define his outcome. At the end of the thermodynamic course, student will able to do this one, this one, this one, this one. And my evaluation process only test whether they have that skill or not, valid skill or not. If this evaluation process is a valid process, then the whatever the grade student get, let us A can be directly transferred to any institute, because if I have an institute B looking for the same set of skill on thermodynamics, then I can say if you completed the course, this course, your credit will be transferred here. I am not looking for the reputation of the institute, I am not looking for the educational uh, uh, examination process, what is the question paper, I am not looking. I said those are the skill set required for the, I will want to de develop thermodynamics and a student has developed all the skill. Now, a program B, institute B, program C wants the same set of skill, skill, then I can say if you complete this course, come to here, does not require that reputation, does not require that something else has to be done. Once fine morning somebody said yes, IIT grade can be compatible to everybody, does not require. It is based on the skill only. So, the defining the designing the outcome based curriculum for every course, for every program is the key issue. Once I done that, great task, credit task for industry sharing, continuous improvement of the curriculum and designing of the curriculum also very easy. Today, if you see 
and somebody syllabus committee. Syllabus committee, some expert sit and three or four experts sit together and define a syllabus. Syllabus for B or instrumentation engineering. This course, this said that this course must be there. This course must be there. Somebody, some expert, expert maybe come from a microwave. He said all the topic of the microwave is very important. So he listed down all the microwave topic. Somebody has come from the industrial instrumentation. He said all the topic of industrial instrumentation is important. He listed down all the topic. So the huge syllabus is made. But it does not guarantee whether that syllabus is achievable by this four year program or not. Whether this whole syllabus are catered to the NBA requirement or Washington attributes or not, it does not. But think if the same, same thing, same every subject designed based on the outcome based curriculum and is openly available in the net. Let us there is a 1000 subject is available, 2000 subject or every there is a lot of varieties of basic electronics, lot of varieties of electrical engineering, uh, basic electrical engineering, lot of varieties of electrical measurement, all courses are available, developed by the different teachers, all outcome based curriculum is available. I am designing a program, I can pick any one of the outcome, I can pick the outcome, I am designing a well, less, I am designing a institute I, designing a program P. For the course, let us I define A and I can search for that what kind of skill I want in the course A. I can define or I can search from the thousands of courses and define the skill. Then I can define the PSO matrix from the skill. So, now my syllabus, whatever the syllabus I prepared is scientifically validated that the all outcomes are achievable in nature and all outcomes scattered to PSO which is PO of NBA or Washington records and a learner it is available to the learner, learner know if I want to become a successful graduate from this program I have to acquire all these skill which is mentioned in the curriculum, not the list of topics. Today, if you ask any student, fourth year students, what are the subjects you study in the last three years, he is unable to name all the subject. Unable to name all the subject, name itself, skill, because again syllabus is available, teacher teach something, deliver it is student take a note, student know that question, what should be the question about the next semester, just read 10 days before the exam, give the exam, get a EX grade, graduated, no skill, nothing. So, this is the requirement, this is the outcome based education advantage. How to design this course curriculum, how to design this, uh, this kind of framework, I will explain in the next lecture, okay.